Hi, and welcome back to day five of the Luxury Closet Masterclass. By now, you've learned how to edit like a pro. You've learned all of my tips and tricks for hanging items. You've learned about shoe organizing, and you've also learned about how to display and merchandise beautiful items in your closet, like purses, any accessories. You can also do this with hats or bags if you have available hanging space on the wall. So today, we're going to tackle drawer organizing. Not everybody has drawers in their closet. This is an island that I'm um, currently leaning against that has drawers on both sides of it, but not everybody has this. So we're going to be talking about it in, if you do have drawers in your closet, but also if you have a dresser in your bedroom, really good ways to utilize that space for storage. So some of my favorite things to put in drawers are things that are difficult to hang. So uh, besides the obvious, which are sports bras, regular bras, socks, and underwear, really good items are um, swimsuits any workout material, pajama sets. You could put um, travel bags in there, anything that you're regularly packing with you, like packing cubes, or if you have you know, travel sets of your toiletries, chargers, um, neck pillows, anything like that would be really good use of drawer storage in your closet. Something that's otherwise not necessarily beautiful on a shelf. Um, you could, of course, put some of those items in baskets if you have shelves in your closet that are available and you have some beautiful baskets that you can utilize. Um, I'll link some of my favorite baskets in the course notes as well. So um, depending on how your dresser is, some of them go drawers that go all the way down. Some of them have a few across. Mine has four small drawers at the top, and then it has two more rows of two drawers and two drawers. And those are deeper drawers, and they're wider than the four that go across the top. So I like to do my drawer organizing in the order of how I get dressed from left to right. It's going to be from top to bottom. So the left, the far left drawer is sports bras and or any kind of like bralettes that don't have support. The second drawer is going to be underwire bras, anything that does have support, any sort of magical bra solution for special occasion or for strapless outfits. Those are all in there, sticky boobs, that kind of stuff. Um, the third drawer has all of my underwear and then the fourth drawer has all of my socks. So again, that's top to bottom, the way that I would get dressed left to right makes it really easy for me to think about getting dressed and really easy to put laundry away as well. Then on my second row, I have pajamas on the left and all workout attire on the right. And then in the very bottom row, I have um, thicker pajamas, like thick pajama pants. I've got some winter slippers in there as well. And then on the bottom right of my dresser, I have swimsuits. I have any kind of supplies that I would use for um, cleaning my shoes or shoe inserts, anything for blisters. I also have my packing cubes in there and then I have extra straps for swimsuits, shoelaces, that kind of stuff that's sort of miscellaneous, not enough of that item to create its own category goes into that drawer. And then when it comes to actually keeping your drawers organized, you don't want them all to just be dumped into this bottomless pit, this open box, basically. So you want to utilize drawer organizers to help you keep your items separate. And it also um, maintains the structure of the drawer in a way that doesn't compromise all the beautiful folding you're going to do when you go in to choose one of the pieces. So depending on how deep or shallow your drawer is, this is actually a bathroom drawer organizer. So this would be for like a vanity. But this closet has a shallow drawer at the very top of the dresser. And so we use this kind for underwear. And because the underwear is silky, we fold it in thirds and then we kind of stand it. And with these dividers, we're able to fit three or four pair of underwear in each of these little cubes, if you can see that. And then these kind of stack differently or they can be for a different category. Same thing over here. So how we have them separated out in this drawer is lace and then the silky ones and then they're by color. It's really beautiful. Um, so you don't always have to use a product based on how it's labeled or what department it's in in the store. Just because this is a bathroom organizer doesn't mean it can only be used in a bathroom. Same with these guys. This is an acrylic drawer insert. This is, can be used in a refrigerator. It can be used in a bathroom. I've used it all over the place. Currently, we're using it in this drawer for socks. So when we have the socks folded, they kind of line up like this. It's really easy to grab your one at the front and then everything still stays standing. So this depends on the, the depth and the length of your drawer, um, how much available space you have. Again, you don't have to be married to what department you found it in the store. It's really just important to figure out kind of what your aesthetic is if you like that acrylic look, and then you wanna get um, accurate measurements of your drawer so you know what will be best in your drawer. I love this guy. This comes in white. They have these in bamboo selections, and they also have them in an acrylic option as well. 
and here's what they do. They're retractable, so, or they're spring-loaded, excuse me. Um, so they can fit any kind of drawer. And they also, this is a four inch deep one, but they come in two inch, two inches deep as well if you had a more shallow drawer um, that you were organizing. So this is really great for keeping items separated, especially wonderful for jeans, yoga pants. I really like this one because yoga pants are silky, you know, they're slippery. So um, this allows you to create a couple of rows in your drawer and to separate out the left, the middle, and the right, or however wide your drawer is. Um, without pulling one item and it knocking over other items that are also in the drawer. And then here's a really simple solution from Ikea. These are very cheap and they come in a pack of six and they have, um, I think two of this size, two of a size that is about half of this and then two that is double this size. So that's really nice because you can sort of Tetris those into whatever drawer you have and see um, how they fit best for your space. And this is kind of better for a deeper drawer. So then let's talk about folding. Um, there's a lot of different ways to fold and usually people are in a hurry when they're folding. So um, like we've talked about in past videos from the previous days of the course, some of this does take a little bit of time. Um, it's not taking tons of time. It's a few extra steps here and there to keep your space tidy. The most, one of the most important things about being organized is that it's a daily practice and no, it doesn't take a ton of time every single time you're doing it but it does take a few extra steps here and there, a couple extra seconds, a couple extra minutes here and there in your life so that you can maintain this organized space and this organized lifestyle. Um, so I think one of the biggest benefits of being and staying organized is that you don't ever have to spend a full weekend organizing your closet or any other space for that matter. It's 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even five of tidying up a space because you already have systems in place. It's super easy for you to put items back to their permanent home. You're not having to start from square one by finding a home for those items. Okay, so let's talk about folding. So we talked about having underwear in some of your drawers. Some people, um, and I'm totally cool with this as their organizer, some people are never going to fold their underwear and I'm totally fine with that. Um, as long as you have little categories or little drawer organizers that separate out different kinds, like these are full coverage underwear, maybe you have a, several nude pairs that you like to wear under lighter color, colored clothing, um, it's totally fine for you to just throw them in the drawer as long as they have those little cubes that can keep them separated. So maybe you have thongs in one section, full coverage, maybe you wear different kind of underwear to sleep, make sure that it's separated that way. That way. And if you don't have any type of occasion that you wear certain underwear for, it's totally fine for it to all go in one drawer. Personally, I like to fold my underwear. You're thinking, of course you do. You're an organizer in your OCD. I'll own that. I do fold my underwear. So, um, Here's my underwear on the internet for the world to see. Um, what I like to do, this, I don't know if you can tell because it's black, but the front of it is facing the camera. Everything starts with a tri-fold, and this is true for all of the folding that we're going to do for the most part. Occasionally, you'll get a really wacky sweater that's more like a poncho, and it has a turtleneck, and you have to come up with a really creative fold. But for the most part, you're always going to start with a tri-fold. So it doesn't matter which side you go with first, but pull over one side, then the other, and then in this case, I'm just going to fold it in half. So here's how small it gets. Um, these are silky, so it doesn't make sense for me. Um, I don't have a shallow drawer like I showed you, so I'm not going to stack them vertically like this. Um, and it really doesn't make sense for me to try to do that in my drawers because mine are deeper. So I just fold them like this and then I stack them on top of one another. Um, and I have one cube, one cubby that has full coverage and one that is for thongs. So I fold the thongs the same way. If you're wondering, it's a little less material, um, but I do those the same way. And then since they're stacked up, this is probably something you've already done on day one of editing, but if you think about when you're taking your laundry out of your drawer, so you're using your underwear, for example, let's say you have 10 pairs of underwear that are in that drawer and you're always taking from the top, right? Depending on how frequently you do your laundry, if you're doing laundry, folding it, putting it back, there's probably a certain amount of pairs of underwear, or pairs of whatever that are never getting touched because they're here at the bottom of the stack and you're always utilizing and cycling what's here at the top. So really consider if you need those extra pair that are at the bottom. If they're in great condition, of course, they'll be the things that eventually cycle as the other ones get older and then they get rotated out. Um, also really great if you are packing. I always like to bring more underwear than I need just in case. So it's not to say that those items are not useful for you, but that's a really good rule to be thinking about when you're organizing your socks. <laughs> underwear, bras, all of those kind of things. I find that I have a lot of sports bras or had a lot of sports bras that were cute 
but they were not practical for me, especially if I was doing cardio. I really need something to strap it down. Um, so those cute sports bras no longer have space in my drawers because I'm never actually going to wear them. And I always reach past them to get to the ones that actually have a lot of support. So that's something to keep in mind when you're um, going through your drawers. The less items you have in there that you're not using, the more likely it is that you're gonna be able to maintain those spaces in your drawers. Okay, so that's underwear. Um, for bras, I really like to put them in a drawer and I like to, let's pull this out. Depending on how much space you have, I really like to tuck the straps back and here, clasp, clasp the back of the bra first. Oops. And then you tuck the straps in. So if you were looking at this from above, it's clean like that. So you don't have all the straps hanging out and getting tangled in. And then same thing with the next one. And they kind of are lined up like you would see them in a department store in your drawer. If you don't have that much space for it, you can twist the cup like that and then tuck all the straps underneath it. I'm gonna do the same thing here and tuck the straps and then it can store in your drawer. They're kind of nestled inside of each other. Um, you may have to get creative with the way that you do that. What you usually don't want to do, depending on your cup size, folding them in half and tucking this in will work for some materials, but other materials, this will actually destroy um, the cup, the padding that shapes it. And then you'll have sort of an uneven surface here at the front of your shirt, which then looks like you're smuggling something under your clothes. Um, and bras are not cheap. Women know that. So be sure that you're uh, protecting the integrity of your garment. And then in the drawer, of course, I like to color code them. So we start with nude, go to tan, then to black. Okay, let's talk about camis, something that girls have a lot of. This would work also with... Um, any workout tops. Okay, I like the top of the garment to be facing up and then you're gonna start with that trifold. Doesn't matter which side you start with. I'm gonna have the straps of it or at the top, they're gonna be what gets tucked inside so that we have clean edges all around. So I'm just gonna start by doing a small fold that just tucks those inside. And then from the rest of the material, I'm gonna fold four times. I'm gonna fold once here, once on this side, so here's where that opens. It's a little hard to see with black. And then the bottom of the shirt is kind of creating this little envelope. And I'm gonna tuck the top into the bottom. So you have this perfect little square. You can kind of toss it. If you're folding in the living room and putting everything back in the basket and then carrying it to your bedroom, it doesn't really matter if it falls over because it stays folded, which is awesome. It also allows you to stack it by standing it up in your drawer. This was the organizer you were using and you had a whole row of tank tops or camis this would be a beautiful display of colors if you had roy g biv or maybe you just wear white and black something like this allows it to stand up without falling over in your drawer and any of those options that i showed you would work for that so you can also do that with workout tops um, and you can do that with pajamas so i want to show you pajamas are usually silky this is a set and I really like to do pajamas how I do my sheets. Um, I like to put the fitted sheet inside of the flat sheet and then wrap it all together so that it's it's um, easy to, to store, but it's also easy to take down and take it to the bedroom that you're gonna use it for because you're not likely going to use one or the other without both of them. So same goes with pajama sets. You could do this with a t-shirt as well. This is gonna be the same fold. With this kind of a shirt, I want the front of it to be facing down and it's just preference it would work the same way if you did it the opposite way but here's why i'll show you start with the trifold so the front of your shirt is actually facing out there and then again you can do this by three folds or you can do this with four i like to do four because i like that it's tighter we're here and then i'm going to open this envelope and tuck the shirt there doesn't have to be gorgeous you just wanna get it tucked. Okay, so we're gonna put this aside for a minute. That's the top of the pajama set. And then we have some pants. Here's how you're gonna do the pants. You're gonna fold the, this is the front, fold those in. 
let's get it up on the counter. From here, fold it in half. And you always want to, well, I do. I say it like it's law. You always want to tuck this little crotch portion right there. Pull it forward. So you fold it in half. And then from here, because this is the length of these pants, um, this is going to go here. And I think we have space to do three, three folds. So it would be into thirds. Here's what the finished product will look like. So before we do that, we're going to put the shirt in the middle. And then you want to do the waistband side first, because that's what's creating that envelope for you to tuck into. And then the rest of the pants are on this side. And they're going to tuck in there. So you have your whole pajama set is wrapped and folded together. So you can do that with smaller sets that are kind of camis and those little shorts. Again, because they're silky and you want them to stay together, it's just really easy to grab the whole set. Also makes packing a breeze. Let's talk about yoga pants. You're gonna fold them very similar to how we just did the pajama pants. Here's that little, let's see if you can see that here. Here's the part where the pants come together. I love to tuck that in because it gives you a clean line. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like both ways. I'm not tucking it on this one. Here's what it looks like. It has this little part that sticks out, right? Let's fold it again by tucking that part in. And what we did here was fold the pants. This is the front facing, fold those parts into each other. Fold in half, tuck the inseam, and then you fold in thirds, starting with the waistband tuck it inside. Now you have mostly a symmetrical rectangle. If you have a shallower drawer, no big deal. Do the quad fold and then you can tuck it into the waistband there. Super simple. This is how I do all my packing. Um, well, this is how I do it in my drawers. And this is also what makes it really simple to pack a suitcase especially if you have one of those hard shells that um, have two sides to them because this is about the height of each, si each side. And then you don't really have to unpack when you get to wherever you're going because you can see everything in your suitcase and it doesn't get messy when you're going through stuff. As you pull stuff out, it's super easy. A couple minutes just to straighten up your closet as needed. Jeans are done very similar to the pajama pants and to the yoga pants. Honestly, they're done the same. The only difference is that you have some pockets to be aware of. So... Let's do a hot pink pair because why not? They're actually leggings, but it does show you um, a pocket. So same thing, you want to fold the front of the pants into one another. And why we love to do that with pants or jeans is so that you can see what the pocket is. It usually shows you the style, the brand, um, so you're able to identify what item that is instead of having a bunch of the same colored pants folded and you can't tell the difference. Occasionally that happens with yoga pants. So again, you want to tuck this part here, fold in half. In this drawer, we did a tri-fold. Super simple. Jeans, um, just because the material is a little stiffer, is actually easier to fold because you're not having to straighten it out. Um, elastic material. So jeans are actually more fun to fold. <laughs> yes, I said folding is fun. Um, and then they just go into the drawer really simply and all the pockets face the same way. I'm gonna post a couple pictures of what this looks like as well so that you can see what I'm talking about and what I'm looking at right now. I also have a lot of folding tutorials on our YouTube channel. We're constantly releasing new materials. So if you don't see something that you're trying to fold here in this course, you can either reply to these emails and we'll get back to you with tutorial on that or we'll create a new YouTube video, especially for you. So now you've made it through all five days of the Luxury Closet Masterclass, and I really hope that you've taken some really strong takeaways with you um, and ideas to implement these practices in your closet to have a closet that you're proud of, that's beautiful, that you like to spend time in, um, that's not a drag to put laundry away in, and that isn't perplexing when you're trying to put an outfit together. So no more of the I have nothing to wear, which really translates to I can't find what I need to wear. Um, you're not going to be holding on to stuff that doesn't fit, things that are ripped or permanently stained, things that don't display you as your best self. You're going to have things organized by category or by color or by style, occasion, any of that stuff. It's going to be super easy for you to 
access what you have, it's also going to be really easy for you to identify what you don't have. Let's say you have tons of black tank tops that you wear, you have a lot of white, and you realize, hey, I don't have any cream. And going through this practice, you were able to identify that that's something that you need. So it allows you to shop more strategically instead of buying something that you think you may or may not have. Um, and it creates that boutique that you're, that boutique look that you are seeking in your closet so that you can feel proud of your space and actually walk away with tools to maintain it and keep it that way. Hope you've had fun. Really appreciate you joining us. Please, please, please reply back with any questions. And we really encourage you to take photos of your space as you're working through. Um, tag it on Instagram to our Instagram account of at misplaced organizing. We would love to feature you on our page or help you if you get stuck at any point along the way. Thanks again for taking our course. We cannot wait to see your finished spaces.